Hello everyone, I'm going to change it up today and make a video that isn't absurdly long. Now if you've seen the title of this video you might be thinking, ah, here we go. Sean and Jen have finally hoisted the old feminism flag. They've come out of the feminism closet and they're about to start spouting feminism all over the place. And well, yes and no. This is a response to Chris Ray Gunn's video, Feminism, Why You Don't Need It. But before we get into that, I'd like to briefly talk about some of the trouble I have with arguing feminism on the internet. And I'm going to describe a scenario that I imagine we've all seen before. Two people are arguing about feminism online, both using the term feminist. However, one person is talking about women fighting for equality and equal rights. You know, from the suffragette movement for voting rights, all the way to the various issues of the modern day. And the other person is using feminist to mean modern women who are critics and anti-free speech and want to censor media that they don't like and force everyone to think like they do. And as a result, the two people talk past one another. Now, I certainly have my own opinion as to which of those two definitions is closer to reality, but, you know, that largely doesn't matter when I'm talking to someone who is rather strongly attached to another definition. Language just isn't good enough for conveying meaning in a lot of cases, but, you know, that's a topic for a smarter person. And this is why I often open my videos with a bunch of waffle, you know, like now defining terms and trying to make sure everyone's on the same page before we move forward. So where does Chris Raygun come in? Well, I picked his video to respond to here because, to his credit, he seems to have had something close to this in his mind when he was writing his video. His main argument is that feminism used to be necessary and purposeful, but having achieved its goal of equal rights for women, it's now useless and is just aimlessly inventing new reasons to carry on. And I'd encourage you all here to go and watch his video. It's not very long, and again, to his credit, it's much less bombastic and insulting than your average video by a first-person shooter-playing dude talking about feminism on YouTube. So from now on, I'm going to assume that everyone watching this video has watched all of Chris Reagan's video. Okay, so again, in short, feminism was a worthwhile cause before women had equal rights, but that goal has now been achieved and now feminism's just an ideology inventing new reasons to perpetuate itself, and modern feminists focus on menial things that don't matter, like the gender pay gap and women's representation in media. You know, old feminist activism good, new feminist ideology bad. And so here's my solution to the problem of arguing over differing definitions of the word feminism. I'm going to argue against Chris Reagan's position, but using his definition of the word feminism. I'm going to play devil's advocate and accept that everything that Chris Reagan said is true. So okay, the gender pay gap. Doesn't matter, it's not a valid issue. Women's representation in media, in films, computer games and so on, that's pointless, it doesn't matter, they're not feminist issues. Now again, I don't really believe these things, but... Just for the purpose of this video, we're going to argue on Chris's terms. So I'll agree with all of Chris's points, with one exception, and that's that feminism is no longer needed. Because even using his definitions, I think there's several ways to argue that feminism is still relevant and necessary. And here's the first. At no point in his video does Chris Reagan specify that he is exclusively talking about any one location. You know, where is feminism no longer necessary, and who no longer needs it? There are plenty of countries in which women still do not have equal rights and legal protections, and in which the oppression of women's much more, shall we say, obvious. Just look at Malala Yousafzai, best said that wrong, uh, getting shot in the head for wanting girls to be able to go to school, and that's something that we in the West might take for granted, but it was not always the case. Now, I doubt very much that Chris would say to someone like Malala, or other girls who are prevented from doing, you know, something as simple as getting an education, that they don't need feminism. You know, women's legal equality, even for issues that we think are long settled in the West, is still a contemporary issue in certain places. Like, it was less than a year ago that women in Saudi Arabia voted for the first time ever. 
And now, of course, I'm being unfair here. I understand that Chris probably wasn't talking about Pakistan or Saudi Arabia or places like that. I imagine he was just talking about the West and America in particular. But as far as I know, Chris does not limit his videos to only being viewed in America. And I know from looking at my own YouTube analytics that you occasionally get views from places that you really wouldn't expect. I've had views from Pakistan and Saudi Arabia and the likes. And Chris has a lot more views than me, so I imagine he's had even more views from places like that where women do not have equal rights. And so this is the first problem with Chris's argument. It's seemingly from an exclusively Western American perspective. And so, okay, let's limit ourselves just to talking about the West. And here's the second problem I have with Chris's argument. It assumes a linear view of social progressivism. In Chris's view, women didn't have the vote, and feminism was therefore necessary, then women got the vote, and now feminism is not necessary. And that's the end of that story. What he's missing is that the current situation is not fixed. And well, maybe it's unfair to say he missed it, because he does mention this. Feminism is a set of values based on decisions that have already been decided, and that very few, if any, people are actually contesting. You know, a small amount of people who disagree with women having equal rights. And I personally can attest to that. I've recently been in some pretty shady places on the internet filled with dudes who would love to take away women's right to vote. And you might argue that these people don't have very mainstream views and what they want will never happen, but hey, who knows? Me and Chris grew up during a time of what's largely been social progressivism, but of course, things can swing the other way. And that's one more argument for the continuation of feminism, I think. It's not enough to just win your rights. As long as there are people out there who would take those rights away from you, they have to be defended. And we've thus far been talking about women's right to vote, and other relatively uncontroversial things like that. What Chris doesn't mention are any of what we'll call the more borderline cases. Now, I doubt anyone would argue that reproductive rights are not a feminist issue, and well, there are people running for the highest office in America right now who are saying that they will overturn Roe vs. Wade. And this isn't ancient history, this is an actual contemporary political reality that could have real legal ramifications for women who are alive right now. Chris says that he believes in women's equal rights, but he calls it egalitarianism, not feminism. And I think the abortion issue is one good argument for the use of the word feminism in place of something like egalitarianism, because it's an issue that disproportionately affects women. It would be equality in one sense for nobody, male or female, to have access to abortion, but that wouldn't tell the whole story, would it? There's a specifically gendered aspect to the issue, and to understand it, you really need a framework that specifically addresses gender inequalities, like feminism. Now, I'll admit that I've only watched this one video of Chris Reagan's, but he doesn't seem here to be that bad of a guy. In fact, he doesn't seem that far off from being a feminist himself. He's just stuck using what I would deem a very narrow-minded definition of the word. And Look, we're back to arguing definitions of words again, so it's probably time to wrap up. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you were able to take something from this. Um, I think I might make a few more shorter videos like this before I get back to the big guys. And I'd just like to mention and apologise here for my awful, terrible devil's advocacy, you know. Being a straight white guy and, you know, relatively sheltered from a lot of issues does give one a somewhat detached and dispassionate perspective and, you know, the ability to pretend to hold views that one doesn't, for the sake of argument, in a way that I understand can be quite annoying to people who are more affected by the actual issues. Um, what am I saying? Uh, there's nothing inherently rational or intelligent about being detached and unemotional. Okay. Uh, someone more articulate than me, please explain what I'm trying to say in the comments. Okay, like, subscribe, all that jazz. See ya.